I'm on my way to interview the owner of an interesting car. I'm on my way to uh, have a bit of a talk with uh, Bernard about his Alpine. Well, I'm here talking to Bernard about this Alpine, or should it be Alpine? Uh, yeah, thank you. It's, it's the correct, correct pronunciation is it's a Alpine A110 Premier Edition. So back in 1955 <laughs> was when Alpine were brought out as a business, basically. Right. And the man that did it was a Frenchman. Um, I can't pronounce his name, so I won't even try. However, he specialised in building lightweight four-cylinder vehicles. Right. And that was his speciality. And over a period of 15 years, he built a lot of different variants. There was an A3110 and an A5110 and things like that. But then finally, um, in the late 60s, early 70s, he made the, the body shell called an A110. Um, it was developed over a few years and then finally in 1973, it won the inaugural World Rally Championship uh, Series. Yep, yep. Um, and it was up against Porsches and all sorts of European fine yeah, material, yeah. there was no doubt about that, but it was so light. It had a 1600cc normally aspirated motor with a couple of In levers. the back, wasn't it? It was. It was a mid-engine car. Yep. So basically it was a 1600cc uh, double dual Weber carburetor type motor, yep. but it was extraordinarily light right. and very nimble. And that's why um, it managed to win the World Rally Championship in 73. Sometime about then, um, Renault, um, bought the company, bought right. the Alpine brand, yep, and have yep. owned it ever since. Right. But not done a lot with, done a lot with it. Yeah, basically, yeah, there was yeah. a couple of variants of Alpines came out probably around the mid to late eighties. Virtually nothing in the nineties, and then in two thousand and fifteen sixteen, they decided, well, we're going to bring out a revised version of the A one ten. Right. But we're going to stick to our history. So this car is 96% aluminium. It is mid-engined. Really? So the only, the only thing that came from Renault, it's got a Megane RS motor in it. So it's a two litre, four cylinder turbocharged motor, yeah. which develops a, a fair amount of power. And in this car, they actually detuned it. In right. this car, yeah. they detuned the motor to develop around about 250 brake horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. The reason, the car's 96% aluminium, it's 1,100 kilos. Really? That's all it weighs. And yeah. believe you me, to drive it, that's exactly what it feels like to yeah. drive. Yeah. As soon as you get in it, you lift up, well, the bonnet, not that there's not under there other than a bit of luggage space. Yeah. Not enough luggage space, according to my wife, mind <laughs> you, but there's luggage space in the front of it and there's a tiny little dude at the back, basically. <laughs> Roof um, rack? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've thought of some different things. We've actually got, would you believe, some luggage coming from Sweden that is specifically made for this car. Really? It's not here yet, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. on the way. So we can go and do some trips in it too. Yeah. And I spent, I spent a whole $11 <laughs> to buy a towel, suction cup towel thing for the bathroom, but because the seats are pure carbon fibre, they're a Sabelt, so the Italian brand Sabelt, right. they weigh 11 kilos each. So yeah. this is how far they went with yeah, regard yeah. to making sure this car was extraordinarily light. Yeah. The good thing about it is got a nice, the seats got a nice smooth back, I push the suction cup towel rack onto the back of the seats, and because Madeline and I aren't blessed with a whole lot of height, um, the seats are a fair way forward. There's a fair bit of room behind them. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's the other interesting thing. Um, the managing director of Renault um, made sure that he could fit into this car. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. six foot three. So basically, there's enough room in the car to accommodate a six foot three person. That's right. one of the 
um, idiosyncrasies of this car. There's plenty of them, yeah. um, but that's one of them. Another idiosyncrasy is it's all very, very modern. It's, it runs a dry clutch, right. so it's got a flappy. It's got three different modes. It's got um, normal mode, sport mode, and then track mode. Um, in sport and normal, it's, you can drive as an auto, and then in track it becomes only a manual, basically. Right. For instance, the car doesn't have a limited slip diff. Really? Which is something that the motoring riders were all like, oh, how's this going to work? Yeah, a bit yeah. like it doesn't have a gear stick. Yeah, yeah. It only works on push buttons. There's a drive right. button, um, um, basically a neutral button and a reverse button. And then after that, the track and the sport modes are, are basically done from the steering So you don't need to be a fighter wheel. pilot to understand all You don't need to be a fighter. You can get in the car literally. Um, with the key nearby somewhere, of course, and it doesn't even have a key, it's just right. a little uh, computer type pad, yep, basically. Yep, yep. You get in the car with a computer pad, um, you push the stop start button, that's something that's really sexy about it, it's got a, it's got a start stop button. So you push the start <laughs> button, it fires to life, you push D for drive, push the accelerator, the brake automatically goes off and you proceed down the road. Well, nice. there's nothing new in the world. I, I can remember my uncle having a Valiant that had push button, push automatic thing, um, and uh, yeah, and I had a Mini A50 where you push the button on the floor to make it go, make it start and go. <laughs> That's exactly right. Well, a lot of modern cars these days, one of their big features is a start-stop button. Yeah, I think yeah. it's back to racing type heritage. Yeah, where yeah. all the race cars, yeah. gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah, push a button. Everybody pushes the button. Yeah, yeah. So aside from that, the everything except the motor was built for this car. Right. So it's got a Gertrag wet uh, dry clutch gearbox. It's a seven speed. Yeah. Um, uh, and as I said, everything else was built for this motor car, basically right. from the ground up. Um, well, the French are famous for going their own way. Um, so. And it is beautiful, I'll have to say that. Well, in the Alpine Blue, as they call it, and this was all the Premier Editions. So there were 1,955 Premier Editions made for Europe and the UK. Right. And that's a, that's a signal to the when the company was made, uh, first came out, 1955 yep. was right. when the first Alpine hit the roads. Yep. So there were 1,955 made of them. Um, word got out, so they were released in Europe in 2017. Word got to Australia that these fabulous things were out. What happened was the local principal dealer for Australia, for Renault, said to his sales guys, get deposits on them and I'll go and get us cars. Right. So basically he landed in France sometime late 17, early 18 with 30, $10,000 deposits on cars. Um, and that's when Alpine, or Renault, um, decided, well, let's make 60 of these premier editions for Australia. Um, at this stage, there are now 59 of them left. Unfortunately, one got T-boned in Melbourne uh, um, and it got written off. Yeah. So there are 59 of these premier editions left. I was gonna say, uh, how did you even find out that they existed? Because it's not like something you would... Uh... Well, I always loved the old car. I've always really, really admired the old car and the old shape. I love the look of the car. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then basically, yeah, just through motoring journals and things and the internet, of course. Yeah, yeah. You're just going through what comes out and what's going around and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I found out about um, the car and then I found out they were coming to Australia, which was even more exciting. Well, when I first saw it, I, I straight away, you, you know what it is. Uh, but then I looked on the internet and one parked next to an old one. And they are quite different. Um, they are. You know, it's like the, the Mini and the, the, the old Mini and all that sort of thing. But they've done a great job of making it look right. Yeah, they certainly have. I mean, right down to obviously the little frog's eyes at the front. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the first thing that really stands out about it. But even the scalloping of the back and the rear section, when you look at it from yep. the back, it certainly is a modern well, the, the roof thing. And the roof, yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So the, dr the fuel economy of the thing is astonishing. Really? It's just. You know, it doesn't have a very big fuel tank, of course, and it's somewhere in here. Basically, yeah, yeah. you fill it from just where you are there, behind the little A, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, and essentially, the drag coefficient is extremely low. Um, it's got ground effects. It's got a completely flat underneath, and it's actually got yeah, the yeah. ground effects right. things up the back. So from yeah. behind, when you look up behind it, you can see why it sticks to the road like blue, number one, but also... 
Um, it's very, very good on the drag coefficient. It's more economical than any car I own. Really? Basically. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. I mean, it's using it. I think it tells you what it's using, of course. And <laughs> driving along the freeway at 110 kilometres an hour, just cruising along, it's using like something like something between three and five litres per 100 kilometres. Yeah. Right? In that, just yeah, cruising yeah. along at 110 kilometres an hour. It's yeah. astonishingly. Um, but also that lends itself to the weight as well. And in regard to performance, it's not bad. It'll do a 0 to uh, 60, 60 miles an hour or 0 to 100 in our speed now. It'll do that in four and a half seconds. And the, and the reviewers have done it in yeah. four and a half seconds. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's supercar type quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that is something else again, I have to say. Um, now... How long you had it? That just so I bought it in June of 2018. Right, so um, Madeline and I planned to use it in a number yep. of events, but of course, you know, our old friend COVID came along. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And really, uh, we were planning to run it in the Targa Florio last year in right. Melbourne. Yeah. Of course, that event didn't go ahead, so we're now planning to run it in the Targa Florio in Melbourne um, at the end of this year. Right. Um, and unfortunately, there just hasn't been a lot of events on. Um, no, it's did, been a year out of our lives. It has. Um, um, I did get it to one event. Of course, it's run the Heart of the Hunter of 2018, just before COVID hit. Yeah. I did uh, run it in that event, um, which was great fun. Um, but yeah, at this stage, uh, we'll be back to do the, the all tarmac events that we can with the Australian Historic Rally Group this year. We'll look yeah, forward yeah. to doing those in it, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it's not the sort of car you want to drive on the dirt road, I don't think. No. No, I don't. well, it's actually, it's finally been out in the rain. It took about, <laughs> it took about nine months, but it finally got wet um, <laughs> when we had it out. But, um, yeah, I've got no real intention of running it down a dirt road at this stage. So how's the getting in and out part? How are you you're coping with that? It's... Oh, look, it's, it's well, it's, 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 it's a bit of a struggle when the door can't open all the way in this, in the shed, but other than that, it's pretty good. Not too really. bad. Um, getting out is probably the fun part. You, uh, what I don't like doing is kicking the door panels and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's the, so that's getting the problem. Yeah. You've just got to be careful, and then you just put your hand on the sill and, yeah. and twist and, and work your way out. Yeah, yeah. If, I mean, I've got to mention this, and that is the, the car's obviously been loved by everybody that's seen it. Yeah. But I think the, the, the biggest endorsement came from two older gentlemen that um, I know quite well still, um, Kevin Mason. He just absolutely adores it. He yeah. thinks it's one of the nicest things he's ever seen. <laughs> um, then he invited um, Peter Houghton down here to have a look at it, and all Peter could say was, it was a great choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, that's, that's a good enough endorsement as far as I'm concerned. Well, he's an old French man, French car man. He, he is an yeah. old French car man, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for chatting about this uh, Alpine. Very well said. No worries. <laughs> I'm Craig McMallard. Bye for now. Thanks.